One day, everything in your life will be personalized. Right now, if you go to get a haircut, your barber or hairstylist knows exactly how you want your hair styled. If you go to your favorite restaurant and you order a steak medium rare, you know that it'll come out just pink in the middle. And if you're like me, and you've ever gone online just one time and searched for unicorns, you know that Google knows that forever and ads will be targeted to you. <laughs> However, medicine doesn't yet work that way. In terms of the way that pharmaceutical companies develop new drugs or therapies, they're developed for groups of people based on their symptoms or based on what they express as being wrong with them. But that'll change as we go forward. And I want to walk through today a conversation about neurology and about genetics and a path toward finding a better and more personalized approach. We all know what it feels like to be unwell, to have a headache, maybe a stomach ache, even some dizziness, some nausea, things don't feel right. And so when you're experiencing this, you have a few different options of ways to cope. First one is you may try to ignore it. Just go on with your day, hope that it goes away or you feel better. Another option could be to call a friend, maybe somebody that works in the healthcare field, or did you eat what I ate last night and are you feeling the same thing? And a third thing you might do is go onto the internet and look for other solutions or other options of ways to try to get better or solve the problem yourself. But in many cases, if it's something real or something that is going to be an extended, life-altering neurological condition, you're going to need to go and see a healthcare expert. So the next step would be to go and see your doctor. Your doctor will ask you questions about what you're feeling, what you're experiencing. And most often, they'll then ask you to have some tests done. So between all of those different inputs, the symptoms that you report, your physician's observations, and those test results, you will then be classified as having a condition. You are condition X. That is your label, that is your designation, and that is how you are seen and treated. However, the way that I think things will change in the future, and they're starting to now, is that individuals will instead of being analyzed and described by their symptoms, they'll be diagnosed by their genetics. So instead of treating someone's symptoms, we'll actually treat the underlying person. Let's take an example. This is a real life example. This is a young girl named Emma. Emma's lived her entire life with seizures. She's also had muscle loss and been wheelchair bound based on a rare neurological disease. Emma tried many drugs. None of them worked to control her seizures or reverse the experiences she's having. It's very hard on her family, hard on those around her, all her loved ones. And we all want someone like Emma or someone that we know to do better. So in this kind of a situation, drugs that were made for the masses aren't going to necessarily be known to how they would help Emma. The way that we can get to this new future or this new state of understanding precision medicine in neurology is by taking three steps. The first one is to do sequencing and understand what's happening in someone's underlying genetics in their genome. The second one is to then build a replica, build a model of what somebody has in a laboratory setting. And the third one is to then take drugs that are available or design new drugs that could reverse the activity of what is seen in that model system. And I'm gonna walk through each of those in a little more detail now. The cost of genetic sequencing has come down tremendously. It used to cost more than a billion dollars to do the first genome. Now it's in the single digit thousands. In terms of time, it used to take more than a decade to do the first genome. That can also now happen in less than a week. And in terms of knowledge base, by studying now tens of thousands of people's genetic information, there are large databases built because every person has genetic abnormalities, but it's important to know which ones actually cause disease. To be able to treat an individual, you have to know what the root cause is, and genetics helps you get there. In the case of Emma, after work was done on her genetic evaluation, it was found that one singular mutation in her entire genome was likely what's called pathogenic or causal 
and causing her entire underlying rare neurological disease. So once this was thought to be the cause, that is part of or the end of step one. So here, I'm going to try to break down models into two general categories. The first ones are cells. So those are just individual cells. Those can come from humans. Those can come from frogs. They can come from many different model systems. But those cells can be evaluated in a laboratory to have the exact mutation that Emma or somebody else has been shown to have on their sequencing report inserted into those cells. Another option are animal models. Animal models are great because they're a living system, not just a cell. However, you can only test one drug at a time in an animal model. So the cells let you test many at a time. That high throughput system is much more readily helpful to try to find a drug when you're testing many. Today's conversation will focus on the cellular models in terms of this example. So in the case of Emma, again, after that mutation was identified as being causal, the model was built in cells in a laboratory with the exact mutation that Emma has. In Emma's situation, you have the evaluation here where there's the wild type on the left-hand side, and the wild type is what anybody would have. Emma is on the right in red. So she had an excitability or an overexcitement of her cells as an output. And those cells represent an exact understanding that this is likely the causal mutation, the reason that she's living with her rare neurological disease. In the next step, researchers are going to go and evaluate actual drugs. The way this happens is starting with a set of wells. So thinking about the cellular model, each of these wells represents a small environment that has Emma's exact mutation in it. And these are plated out over 1,300 times. To try to find drugs that could work today, repurposed or generic drugs that are available on the market, but not indicated for seizures, are not indicated for the muscle loss that she's been experiencing. These drugs are then taken and placed in each of the 1,300 different wells. The really good thing about doing this kind of research is that it's come down in cost over time, meaning that these high throughput machines can test thousands and thousands of drugs in the period of a day. However, the cost is still not accessible for the masses of people who need this kind of a service. Also, by using repurposed drugs or generic drugs that are on the market, a physician knows the exact side effects of each and can make a treatment decision that they think can help a patient. And the third thing is that these drugs are generic, so they're available today at the pharmacy, and they're very low in cost. So in the case of Emma, what was wonderful in this example is that after doing all of this research, paroxetine, better known as Paxil, was found to be a hit in the model system. It reduced that excitability. The physician then read the report, took Paxil, gave it to Emma. She slept through the night for the first night of her entire life, her first night on Paxil. She took her first swim class two weeks later, and she had no seizures on Paxil over the next 14 months. So these examples are already starting to be real, but they're singular examples. In the future, where we want to go is to make sure that people like Emma or your loved ones don't have to go through drug after drug after drug that were designed for the masses and not specifically for them. In the future, the way that we'll do this work is that individuals will be sequenced, the model system is built and drugs are tested, and then physicians have new options to make an impact today. And I can't wait until we get there. Thank you.